especially by spiritual entities by demonic orchestrations and demonic activities I'm here to say to someone you might feel like you're sinking you might feel like you're turning to the fire but you will burn and in case you're already burning I pray in the name of Jesus that the presence of Yeshua I am a Shia, the son of the living God will rescue you rescue your family rescue your health if you believe it shout amen the king got up and he was surprised and he asked reduce the volume of the word of the song he asked he asked his advisors we tied only three men and we threw them we threw only three men into the fire is that right his advisor said yes king you are right the king said look there is a mystery there is a mystery a spirit has entered there but that spirit is wearing a body you don't understand the implication of this. For Nebuchadnezzar to see Christ pre-incarnated, to see what Christ looked like before Christ came to the earth. <laughs> oh, child of God, I want you to know the world is about to experience what the Bible calls the powers of the world to come. Jesus was not born. Yet Nebuchadnezzar saw him. He said, look, I see four men walking around the in the fire. God wants you to know that this fire is not meant to burn you, child of God. It's meant to reveal the fourth man. Oh, Jesus, the coronavirus is meant to reveal the fourth man. And I want to say to the world, look in the fire, you will see the fourth man. Look in the fire, you will see the fourth man. God has raised up his church and we are the church of Jesus, the relentless church of Jesus, the burning church of Jesus, the fire rise church of Jesus, the one faithful by God, the one called to fulfill all that God has ordained for us to accomplish in our lifetime. We are the one called to demonstrate the spirit of excellence. And I want you to look out in the fire of coronavirus. You will see the fourth man. You will see the fourth man. Nebuchadnezzar saw the fourth man. Church. <laughs> God wants to use your faith, your trust, and your excellence to reveal his son to our world. <laughs> the spirit of faith is the spirit of faith is amazing, but the spirit of faith is inside the spirit of excellence. An excellent spirit is the spirit, is the house that accommodates every other divine spirit. Say that loud and clear. Say it again, David Philemon. An excellent spirit is the spiritual warehouse that accommodates every other divine spirit. The spirit of holiness is in an excellent spirit. The spirit of faith is in an excellent spirit. As a matter of fact, an essence will present faith in its higher form because faith by itself is believing. But there's something higher than faith because the Bible says you can cast away your faith or confidence. There's a higher realm of faith called trust. They that trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion. Trust is stronger than faith. Yeah. So the spirit of faith is inside an excellent spirit the spirit of wisdom is inside an excellent spirit 
revelation, counsel, might, they are all inside an excellent spirit. It was an excellent spirit that gave Daniel access to the spirit world to interpret, to know the dream of the king and give him the interpretation. So the, the, the spirit of excellence is that spiritual warehouse that accommodates every other spirit of God. And if it accommodates every other spirit of God, it is the highest license you can have as a child of God. Oh Lord our God, how excellent is your name. And the Bible tells us God is excellent because of his spirit. And so the Bible says, say behold, I see four men walking around in the fire. They are not tied up. And they are what? They are not burned. I want you to know that your faith is being tested. Everything about your life. But God is about to reveal himself. That's why you don't allow unemployment, joblessness to make you lose your faith in God. You don't make decision of your life based on the oppositions. No. You make decision based on God's plan and purpose for your life. An excellent spirit enable you to interpret things correctly. An excellent spirit enable you to project success and greatness into your future. An excellent spirit. God said to, to, to uh, Jonah, go to Nineveh. He went to Tarshish. And so he failed. And God decided to put him in the belly of a fish. And when he appeared in Nineveh, he manifested his destiny. An excellent spirit will give you clarity and direction. It will forbid you from going to the wrong destination. Because sometimes in life you take the you make the wrong move, you take the wrong ship or the wrong boat, you will suffer unnecessary storm. God never said, and Jonah shall go into the belly of a fish. God said, Jonah, go. I have settled your bills. But when he entered the wrong ship, he paid the bill himself. But when God buried him in his own ship, the fish spat him out. And three days, there was a global revival. The spirit of excellence is what enables you to design God's will for your life and press and pursue God's will so that you are able to fulfill that which God ordained for your life with little or no mishap or error or regrets. He said, I saw four men tied, but they were not born. I mean, I saw them walking, not tied and not burned. The fourth man looks like an angel. It looks like an angel. The King James says it looks like the son of man. It looks like the son of man. Go, move up please. Everyone, let's pray together. I want to go. Then Nebuchadnezzar went to the opening of the hot furnace. He shouted, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. What happened? Come out, servants of the most high God. Come here. The king that said you will bow. Suddenly the king said, I recognize your God. The evidence that you serve God is that he is the consuming fire. And he burnt the fire meant to burn you. And I'm telling you, I'm bringing you America to the place God wants you to get into. This is where God wants you to come to. You may think, what does he know? If I don't know anything, I know God. And I know the future of the church. And I know what I'm telling you. If you will embrace what I'm teaching you, God will take you to height beyond your wildest dream. The king said, please come out of the fire because you are servants of the most high God. And so Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the fire. You will think that's the end of it. Let's look at certain rewards of excellent spirit. When they came out, the straps, prof, prof, what? Perfect, governors, the, sorry, the satraps, prefect, not perfect, prefect, governors, and royal advisors crowded around them. When you have the answer, you command the crowd. When they come out, we are coming out, morning is coming. I said morning is coming. The God said morning is coming. They could see that the fire had not burned Church on Fire International. 
Uh -huh. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Their bodies were not burned at all. Their hair was not burned. And their robes, what? Were not burned. Now look at the interesting fact. Loud and clear. They didn't even smell as if they had been near fire. Shout a loud amen. They didn't even smell. Now everybody done. Nebuchadnezzar said, Praise the God of Church on Fire International, the God of David Saul to Philemon. Praise the God. God wants the best and the greatest of all kings to see the fourth man in this fire. Then they will praise the name of the God of heaven. I prophesy over the body of Christ that this fire will not smell on the body of the saints. And as many as run to Christ for refuge, the same grace will work for them in the name of Jesus. Their God has sent his angel or his son and saved his servant from the fire. Now, everybody, these three men trusted their God. And what happened? And refused to obey my command. They were willing to die instead of serving or worshiping any other God. Go ahead. One, two, go. So, I now make this law. We are called to change the law. The law will favor the kingdom of God. I change or I make this law. Anyone from any nation or language group who says anything against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego will be cut into pieces and their house will be, will be what? Will be destroyed until it is a pile of dirt and ashes. No other God can save his people like this. Everybody read. That's not the end. One, two, go. Then the king gave Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego more important jobs in the province of Babylon. Say, I hear go up. He gave them more important jobs. Then King Nebuchadnezzar sent this letter to many nations and language and everyone and he started telling them about the testimonies and all those stuff. But here's the point. These young men stood because in their family they don't bow. They don't bow. The king promoted them. The King James says and then the king promoted them. The king elevated them. I don't know how many of you are listening to me. Your days of promotion are around the corner. Amen. Your days of promotion are around the corner. Amen. I say very soon you will be promoted. Amen. I mean the days are around. They are around. They are around. They are around. I can smell it in the spirit. They are here in the name of Jesus. Amen. Back. Everyone standing. Let's back to Ezekiel, uh, back to Isaiah, our scripture. Let's read that verse 12 again. Verse 12. Isaiah 21, verse 12. Mm. You're going to cry out to God. Two things I'll ask you to pray. Two things you'll pray. Let's read. Let's read 11 and 12 quickly. 11. Everyone, are you awake? All right. Are you awake? Are you awake? If you're awake, raise your right and shout amen. amen. I can see you're awake. I just want you to be more awake than you're awake. Because we've come to this powerful point. I want to hear everyone read one to go. No, from the ERV, please. Everyone read one to go. This is a message about Duma. Let's say about the earth, about the church, about our world, our world today, about North America. 
There is someone calling to me from Seir. Someone is calling. The generation is calling. Our world is calling. Every time a problem shows up, it's a calling. God creates burdens so we can bring what is. Anointing destroys, destroys yokes and lifts up burdens. So the best days to live now is the best days is the time where yokes, bring your hands out, where yokes are about to be destroyed. So these are the best days to live. Stay focused. Let's finish. God, how much of the night is left? When will this problem be over? How long do we have to stay? Then he asks, how much longer will it be night? So when this is over, is there anything to expect? So look at it. Everybody read verse 12. The God who is the watchman answered, Morning is coming. So America, morning is coming. Morning is coming. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Morning is coming. If you don't know God, you will settle for the coming morning. But God wants you to know this truth. Everybody read. Morning is coming, but then night will come again. Are you listening? The good news is morning is coming. The great news is night is coming again. People who don't know God will say you are a prophet of doom because they don't know God. And they don't, they are not watchmen. So they prophesy peace, peace in the time of war. And God said, war to those that listen to the prophets that say peace when God said get ready for war. Morning is coming but then night will come again. So God has asked me to say to his church be prepared for the night that is coming again. When the night comes again, the world will run to the church for light. Because light is the answer to the night. And one of the description of an excellent spirit is called light. Light and understanding. Where you are able to see things clearly when others see what shallow things. Morning is coming, but then night will come again. Shallow people will be happy for the coming morning. Deep people will be prepared and equipped for the coming nights. So that when the foolish virgins are happy with just enough oil, the wise virgins <laughs> will have extra oil. So when the morning comes, God will give the world a relief. During the time of relief, foolish people will be happy with just enough oil. But wise people will gather up oil. This is the time to generate oil. To increase the viscosity of your oil. This is the time to pray as never before. To study as never before. To believe as never before. To practice has never before. This is the time to honor God has never before. To believe God, to sacrifice to him, to live sacrificially has never before. This is the time to send up the sacrifice of worship, the sacrifice of prayer, the sacrifice of services, the sacrifice of your life. 
This is the time to generate oil, to generate spiritual oil, spiritual power and fire. This is a time to generate financial oil by obedience and covenant. Go check the areas that you have missed God and catch up with it. Don't play the fool, I beg you. Don't play the fool. In the midst of this darkness, I have said it before, but there are people that will not listen. Honor God with your first fruit. You will be ahead of those that don't honor God. Honor God with your sight. Honor God with your offerings, with your sacrifices. Honor the prophets. Honor the poor. Bless the poor. Honor your parents. Give to the world. Bless those that don't know God. Bless those that do know God. This is the time to live above reproach. This is the time because the nights will come again. If you don't have extra oil, when the midnight comes and you hear the sound, you will start looking for oil. The Lord said to me, pray because my people are not ready. If anything happens, they will be losers and the world would laugh at them and indirectly laugh at me because the world will say God failed them. But the world will not know that they were the ones that failed God. They were the ones that ignored the voice of wisdom. And wisdom said in Proverbs, I'm standing at your door calling. He said, length of days are in my hand. Riches and honor are with me. He said, if I call you and you ignore me, then you will be so shocked in the days of your calamity. Proverbs chapter 1. You will call upon me and I will not answer. He said, when sudden fear and destruction comes, you will look for me, but I will not listen to you. I'm telling you, precious child of God, this is not a threat. This is the call of the God. Amen. The morning is coming, but then night will come again. I'm a God. I'm a watchman that have eyes and I watch. I'm not a watchman that slumbers. I'm not a dog. I don't even bark. I don't need to bark. I'm a lion that roar. I'm a watchman. Believe what I'm saying to you. Morning is coming, but night will come again. Things that are worse than coronavirus will come again. It's not a prophecy of doom. It's actually a prophecy of glory. Because when night comes, yes. darkness covers the earth. Gross darkness to people. God, his glory will be seen upon you. Yes. So this is a time to go for light. This is a time to generate oil and power. This is a time to be who God has called you to be. This is a time to pray. Wherever you are watching me from, thus said the Lord. This is the time to serve God. I'm praying for you. As I speak to you, I want you to believe for you and your household. Night is coming. Worse than the virus. But God is saying to tell you, you will not be taken by surprise. Don't be taken by surprise. Listen to the voice of the prophet of God. Listen to the words of the living God. Lastly, Proverbs chapter 1 verse 28. Proverbs 1 28. There is a spirit called the spirit of wisdom but there is a spirit of excellence. As I pray for you, you might be watching we have Facebook, Instagram or perhaps you're watching we have YouTube or Periscope or maybe you will listen to this radio or has a radio broadcast or a podcast I want you to know that the spirit of Jesus is saying to you I'm about to do something let's read it together Proverbs 1 28 fools will call for me but I will not answer them they will look for me but they will not find me because what they disrespect the fact that night is coming again. Move up, please, everyone. 
I'd like you to hear. Read again. One to go, everybody. Because they did what? They hated what? They hated what? Continue. Because they hated knowledge. And they did what? They refused to fear and respect the Lord. And what will happen to them? So God is saying it is important for you to come to the place where I can correct you, instruct you, and teach you. Somebody say, teach me, Lord. Teach me, Lord. Now read verse 33. Verse 33. Loud and clear, everybody. But those who do what? Will do what? Those who listen to me will live how? Say they will live in safety and comfort. So he's saying that if you listen, I want to bring something quickly. If you listen, you will live in safety and comfort. So, how do I come to the place where I'm able to genuinely live in safety and comfort? Proverbs 1. What are we reading here? Proverbs, what is this? 133. All right. Go back to Proverbs 1. Say, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Master. Lembros copre kenti yataba. Zebro kuda bayaga lege de baliga da balata. Now go to verse 23. Proverbs 1, 23. Proverbs 1, 23. Let's read together. One to go. Continue. Now verse 23, King James Version. 23, King James Version. I saw this verse some years ago. And this changed my life. And I want you to read it. One to go. Turn you. At my reproof, behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. The spirit of excellence can be poured upon an individual if we turn at his reproof. The truth about this reproof is that there's no question that is without an answer. God is looking for those who will demand answers from him. The quality of your hunger determines what is poured out to you. A young man, a young woman that is too tired and easily you know, discouraged by things will not be able to access the spirit of excellence. Tomorrow I will show you how to access and receive the spirit of excellence. 
I discovered that the spirit of excellence 